A lot of people misunderstand. There's a lot of mis miscommunication, confusion around what is workplace bullying. It's Diversity TV, bringing you the untold stories for the week of November 26, 2021, in English and French, from our River Valley studio, right here in Edmonton, Alberta's capital. Hosted by Maureen in English and Amy in French. Sponsored by Ray Z Plumbing and Heating, now offering fantastic deals for water heaters and furnaces. Here are the headlines for this week. You work hard for your money and you pay it to the city as property tax. Do you want to know how the city spends this money? City of Calgary Chief Financial Officer explains. In our inclusion project this week, the Edmonton Fire Chief talks to Diversity TV on what the Edmonton Fire Rescue Services is doing and planning to do with respect to diversity and inclusion. And the question of the week is, I've never experienced feeling until one of my colleagues told me another colleague is always new to me. As part of Bullying Week, can you effectively recognize when you're being bullied and what can you do about it? Now, the news in detail. Segment 1. What happens to your tax dollars when it gets to the city of Calgary? Carla Mayo, Calgary Chief Financial Officer, explains 2022 plans and budget adjustments, how taxes are distributed, how decisions are made, and reductions. Hi everybody, my name is Carla Mayo and I'm the Chief Financial Officer here at the City of Calgary. Overall, our budget is just over $4 billion. That sounds like a lot of money, but it equates to about $5.88 for every home in Calgary. And that's incredible value for the 61 services that we offer, like fire, police, 911, transportation, snow and ice control. Did you know that when you get your property tax uh, bill in the mail, 35% of that actually goes to the province to support their programs and 65% of it stays sure that we use a system that's fair and equitable. And that is based on the market value assessment of your property. And so every year we go out and we do a market value assessment and assign those values to your property. Then based on the relative market value, we then distribute the taxes accordingly. In addition to that, we actually have two different classes of um, assessed properties. One is residential or homeowners, and the other is non-residential, which is essentially our commercial businesses. Ta uh, Council has guided us that residential or homeowners uh, receive 52% of the tax responsibility, and non-residential uh, property owners or commercial businesses receive 48%. fashion and beauty time on Diversity TV. Our hosts always look fabulous with eye-catching mommy water hair, right? Do you want to know why? Okay, let me let you into our little secret. The magic is done by Quick Fix Hair and Beauty Supply on 10422 118th Avenue, Northwest Edmonton. You may want to talk to someone at 780-802-11 Six one. Segment three. In our business news this week, we chatted with two entrepreneurs in Lethbridge on how their business is doing. Uh, my name is Temi Oresoya, and um, I basically do everything in real estate uh, in uh, the city of Lethbridge. Uh, I'm a licensed realtor in Alberta, and I have a custom home building company, Torres Development and Realty Investment Incorporated. Uh, with Torres, I build uh, three to four custom built home every year. This one that uh, I'm sitting in right now, we just uh, moved in about uh, eight days ago, is my third home that I delivered this year. And uh, with Torres, I also do um, uh, renovation and uh, you know, custom alteration. I have uh, two garages that are in progress right now, 
I have uh, two homes uh, that are already lined up to commence uh, next year. And uh, on the realty side, I basically help people who are looking to buy or sell their home. I've helped uh, multiple family this year you know, to sell their home or to find a home for them. Some of the other things that I also do, um, you know, they say, well, there's uh, no freebie or I do help uh, people who are relocating into Leadbridge and uh, some of uh, the way that I help them is I basically help them, assist them in finding uh, a property for rent. Some of them end up uh, buying a home or, or building a home, uh, but uh, it's a service that I render for free uh, based on my own experience because when many years ago we were moving as a family from Montreal to Saskatoon, we wished that, that uh, there's somebody that uh, we, could, uh, we, we, could, we could have used uh, to help us uh, kind of figure out where we're going to live. And so I rendered those services uh, for free. And um, any question on real estate, uh, buying, selling, building, if a building uh, will uh, be worth it uh, for people, I kind of uh, help them to navigate uh, through uh, what options are available to them. So I can say I'm, uh, I'm pretty comfortable in anything in real estate uh, for people who are interested in just uh, you know, uh, you just uh, have uh, an idea or you have a question, you don't know where to go. Um, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much available. I'm on uh, social media, on Facebook, uh, Torres Development uh, uh, you know, and Realty Develop, uh, Real Realty uh, in Incorporated is there and uh, Temi Oresonia Realtor. It's on uh, Facebook and I do connect uh, with people on other social media, WhatsApp and uh, in Instagram as well. So um, basically in a nutshell, this is what I do uh, in Lethbridge, uh, helping people to, uh, to fit in. Um, I've been here for 16 years and I've seen this city grow from about 75,000 when we moved in to about 105,000 right now. It's a faster growing uh, community in southern Alberta and uh, it, it's a great place uh, to, uh, to raise a uh, family. Um, and, uh, yeah, any question on, uh, on the city, what, uh, you know, where you, you, you live or, or what else, you know, basically I uh, would be happy to, to help uh, you know, people. My name is Aditoye Oyebola and uh, I'm just helping my wife at the store today. But uh, the business started in uh, 2017, and the whole idea between, be, behind this business is uh, when we notice that uh, there's the mo most of people do not, are not able to get what they needed in the city, they have to travel to Calgary, then uh, we came up with the idea, idea of starting up a small business whereby people can come and buy what they need. So that's why we call it uh, uh, affordable. And uh, yeah, as you can see on this logo, it said um, within your reach and affordable. So that's what we try to do. Arrangement of the store is in three layers. So we have the front layer, which is the till area. As you can see, we have the till and we have some small, small articles and accessories in the front area. And when you go, uh, when you come up to the, Go to the step, which is the upper level. You can see where we have some accessories as well, jewelries, cosmetics. We have shoes and bags. We have uh, African cosmetics. We have air products, body products, and all those stuff. And uh, if you see this place, this is mainly for the cosmetics and the air product. Then if you come inside, you will see the, where we have the clothing and the hair product and the bags, purses. And you can see we still have some wigs as well. We have, uh, we have some uh, Brazilian wigs, we have uh, synthetic wigs, we have braids and all kinds of hair. And uh, we have um, expressions, uh, we have other wigs and we have uh, crochet hair in different colors, ties, length and uh, different styles and you can see all of them around. So the idea behind this place where we divided the place into sections is because we are very fortunate with the location actually. 
but we think that uh, if we have it in different layers, you can see people can will not be spending food on their clothing and on their hair. So it's totally separate from each other. So they are not the same. So that's the idea be, behind the whole pin. So everything separated. So when you are coming, you can do your shop. And like we said, it's within your rich, rich and affordable. And it's a, we call it like a one-stop shop for everything. Because now we don't sell only food. We sell clothing for men, for women cosmetics, hair, and all those stuff. So while you are doing that, or while you are doing your groceries, let's go down with, say, the food department. So we have some product also. We have yams. These are mainly from Ghana. We have different type of vegetables, different type of uh, assorted, assorted uh, dry fish, and this uh, most ethnic product. We have some Jamaican product, Caribbean, Africa. That's why we call it the exotic market. And this is the food department. So everything you see are frozen foods and vegetables, dry food products. Uh, you can see different type of flowers. Africa, we use a lot of flowers and swallowed food. So that's why we have rice and uh, we have palm oil. It's very synonymous to Africa and uh, most Caribbean. So we have different type of, you can see this is noodles and this is uh, mainly from uh, Nigeria, Ghana. We have different kind of like more flowers. So, okay, we can get something that is affordable for people and within their reach. So you can easily wake up, I need a cup of uh, rice. You can easily drive down or I need a particular flower. You can easily drive down and pick it up. And when we started, we still do that. Now we also do delivery to people because uh, Ledbridge is a pretty small city. And to go around within 15 minutes, you almost get to every length and breadth of the cities. Segment four, Street Talk COVID and our people. Starting November 24th, Albertans planning to travel can now get an updated QR code proof of vaccine that meets the recommended Canadian standard for domestic and international travel. The updated record includes the Canadian flag, middle names, and is in both official languages. Vaccine records need to be saved before leaving the country. Access to the website is restricted to within Canada. Albertans who have already who already have the QR code vaccine record do not need to save or reprint the updated version if not traveling. Get a printed record with QR code at no cost by visiting the registry agent office or calling 811. Download the updated QR vaccine record at alberta.ca slash COVID records. In another development, Children aged 5 to 11 are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. Appointments will be made available once supply has been delivered, which is currently expected to arrive the week of November 22nd. Parents and guardians can voluntarily pre-register their children through the Alberta vaccine booking system. pfizer Biontech's commentary vaccine is the only vaccine approved for use in children 5 to 11 in Canada. Pre-register now at alberta.ca slash vaccine. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, who was hunting Tigray forces over a year ago, has become the hunted as he moved to the battlefront as a coalition of Tigray forces and other forces advanced on the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Segment 6. What do we have for food this week? She eats this peppery sauce with everything. Wow. This week, we took a dive into the delicious 
natural, locally made, locally sourced royal tiso pepper sauce. It's in mild, hot, and extra hot flavors for the pepper eaters and non-pepper eaters due to the slap yo mama in the face impact that it has on food. I like to eat my royal tiso with rice, white rice, nothing because it tastes a lot better that way. I get to enjoy the the, the flavor of royal tiso quite easily this way. I just put a good chunk of it like that, then I mix it together. And I eat just with the royal tiso. Mmm. No, that is good. It tastes so good. It's spicy, not too hot, just perfect with the rice. And there's no other thing in the rice to conflict the taste of the royal tiso. So it makes life easy. Boil the rice and eat the soup. Segment 7. In our second edition of the Inclusion Project, sharing what organizations are doing to tackle racism and discrimination, we had a chat with Edmonton Fire Chief Joe Zatlini. What is the Edmonton Fire Rescue Services doing with respect to diversity and inclusion, especially at a time when Mayor Sohi and Council have directed administration to present a racism strategy? Listen to Edmonton Chief Joe Zatini, who only took the job on June 1st, 2020. Uh, it is so key to delivering the quality of service that our Edmontonians expect. And I think at its heart, um, diversity in general and attracting diversity and being inclusive and uh, treating each other with the, the best way that we can treat each other, it promotes innovation, better problem solving. It's linked to uh, a stronger, psychologically safe workplace, improved teamwork, and a deeper sense of empathy uh, for those that we serve. So this is very much near and dear to me as, as fire chief, and it's an important initiative for Edmonton Fire Rescue Services. You know, we recognize just in general in the fire service, there's a gender imbalance and, and um, Typically, when, when we think of gender, we, we, we look at uh, men versus women. And currently in Edmonton Fire, we're less than 1% of firefighters in Edmonton that are women. And in North America, that's around, uh, it's around 4.4% um, that are women. And then as well, uh, just around Canada, we're at about 4%. So um, when we talk about diversity and, and diversity and gender, we know we have a ways to go just around that front. Um, let, and, and I want to acknowledge that, you know, gender is not just about not being binary. Um, it doesn't mean uh, either or. Uh, and, you know, historically, when we look at um, uh, being in, inclusive and attracting diversity, it's about all uh, disadvantaged groups or underrepresented groups in the fire service. So um, our goals is we, we are uh, targeting and focusing in, in different areas to attract um, diversity to the fire service. Uh, and and it's not just about our recruitment. We also need to understand each other to make a stronger team. So it's about learning internally. It's about making sure that our policies and procedures are welcoming and inclusive. And we can, um, the more we learn about cultures and the people we serve, the more we will attract and uh, they will see themselves more in the fire service. But on, the, on, on the, the, the larger front right now, that's where our challenges are, is um, attracting people to get to the service. So that brings us to focusing on recruitment. And so we, we want a fire service that reflects the community we serve. And uh, at the city of Edmonton, we're guided by our corporate art of inclusion framework, which offers fundamental understandings of what it means to be inclusive and includes an action plan that helps us to achieve our goals in creating inclusive workplaces. When, when you look at in the fire service, so what does that mean? How do, we, how do we apply that in our programming? And so, you know, first and foremost, 
we looked at our recruitment process last year on ways that we can improve our attraction to the fire service. And very quickly, um, we noticed that we, we needed to increase the transparency around what, how do you get through our process and go through the different steps. And we looked at our different, the different steps that are in there to see, well, are there any barriers that would um, restrict or prohibit uh, um, those who aren't traditionally seen the fire service from going through the steps to becoming a, a firefighter. And so we looked at, you know, the, the cost implications, um, the prerequisite implications, and, um, and, and we made some changes to our process over the, over the last year, which we still have changes to go to make sure that we're being as, as welcoming and uh, taking that uh, GBA plus lens that um, the, the city has done an incredible job to build to the way we are attracting and, and doing business at Edmonton Fire. And I would say that the last sort of strong lens that we put on is, you know, um, the, the training around bias and unconscious bias and making sure that when we, our, our members that are, are part of the interview process really have the skills and training to make sure that we're doing our best to get the best candidates. And I think that's just leading practices that's important for every organization to have and, and ensure that we're doing our best once they get through the door, that they, they have uh, the ability to get through the process without uh, barriers. have for community announcements this week. Get to know some of the employment programs offered by Solomon College in Edmonton. Please contact 780-431-1515 or info at solomoncollege.ca. And I'm here today to talk to you about three employment programs that Solomon College delivers. The first is our Connections to Employment program, uh, which focuses on preparing newcomers to work in the retail sector. Secondly, we have our Food Service Supervisor Preparation Program, which supports newcomers to develop skills to work in the food services sector. And our final employment training program is our Quest key workplace essential skills training program, which is designed to help newcomers build uh, warehouse technology skills to work in the warehousing sector. And the question of the week is, can you recognize when you're being bullied? November is Bullying Awareness and Prevention Month. During Bullying Awareness and Prevention Month, everyone is encouraged to learn more about bullying and its effects. Bullying is defined as a form of persistent, repeated, and aggressive behavior directed at an individual or individuals that is intended to cause or should be known to cause fear and distress and or harm to another person's body, feelings, self-esteem, or reputation. Bullying occurs in a context where there is a real or perceived power imbalance. It comes in different forms. It could be physical, hitting, shoving, stealing, or damaging property. It could be verbal, name calling, mocking, or making sexist, racist, or homophobic comments. It could also be social, excluding others from a group, or spreading gossip or rumors about them. It comes in the form of electronics, commonly known as cyberbullying, spreading rumors and hurtful comments through the use of cell phones, email, text messaging, and through social media. The bullying helpline in Alberta is 1-888-456-2323. Linda from Alberta Bullying Resource Center is here to tell us more. My name is Linda Crockett and I am the founder of the Canadian Institute of Workplace Bullying and Harassment Resources. Located in Edmonton, Alberta, but servicing all can Canadians, employers, and individual employees. I think it's really important, especially today. A lot of people misunderstand. There's a lot of mis miscommunication, 
confusion around what is workplace bullying. It is not childhood bullying. Childhood bullying is very different from workplace. Let's face it, we are adults, we are educated, we're far more mature. So our behaviors of bullying are far more sophisticated. They're primarily psychological harassment. And if it is not stopped or addressed appropriately, it becomes psychological violence. It can evolve to psychological violence. So what we're talking about is a very insidious form of abuse. And we're not just talking about mean girls. We're not just talking about rudeness or incivility or abrasiveness. Those are the early warning signs and they should be addressed. But if that's not addressed, it will evolve. And workplace bullying is a form of harassment, like I said, psychological harassment. So it's never a one-time incident. It's not a one-time incident. That's important for people to understand. You can be harassed on a one-time incident, but psychological harassment or psychological violence or bullying is never one time. So it might be 20 times that somebody started a rumor about you. It might be 10 times that they've slammed a door in your face. It might be 10 times that they have told a lie about you or excluded you or ignored you or ostracized you, sabotage your relationship, sabotage your reputation, set you up for failure, attempts to really just diminish you. So it is a variety of these negative tactics and negative behaviors and words and actions over a period of time, three months or more, three months or more if you if you've noticed that something's just not right you can't put your finger on it your gut's telling you something's wrong you're being treated poorly whether it's your colleague or your leadership something's up and if you're confused about that you're just not sure call someone like me and clear and i can clarify things for you i can give you the direction on where you want to go what you want to do is learn about what is workplace bullying and what is it not Look at your company policies and procedures. What do they say about bullying and harassment? Legislation here in Alberta, finally, about two and a half, three years ago, we got finally got legislation to protect you. It is against the law to bully you. It used to be against, you could not show up at work if there was a physical hazard. Well, now psychological harassment or bullying is illegal also. It's incredibly important for people to start documenting. Whether you want to report the abuse or not, commit to documenting. Keep a record. Keep it in a safe place. Document what time, what day, what happened, what was said. Don't put assumptions in there. Start documenting. That is a tracking system. You need it for clarity. You need clarity for confidence and you need confidence for courage. So keep those documents. Look at your company policies. Talk to somebody. Avoid isolating because that's what the bullies want you to do. They want you to isolate. They want you to be quiet. You'll feed them if you do that. You'll want to do it, but resist it. Talk to someone. Talk to your family, your doctor. Your doctor needs to be recording your symptoms just in case the stress is going to make you sick. But also, that's another professional documenting on your behalf. Call someone like me if you need. Talk to a human rights. Talk to your union. Whatever you feel safe. Talk to somebody. Human rights, your union, uh, labor standards, WCB. You can call them and ask them for a information about workplace bullying. So there's resources out there for you. So take care of yourself and reach out for help. It's not sure what to do. Document no matter what. Reach out to someone like me who can help you process that and even strategize for you. Every individual is unique. Every case of bullying in the workplace is unique. There's a lot to learn about it. Try not to fall back on assumptions and old myths and old stigmas about it. I have to say, especially people who have who are minorities or even men. Men do not reach out for help. And by the time they come to see me, they're quite suicidal. They're quite depressed. And we need to make sure our, we do better with our men. Reach out for help before you're at high risk of a heart attack, at high risk of suicide. This is a very serious matter. We have people dying prematurely because of this. Absolutely. So no matter what your gut's telling you, trust your gut. What is a high-level bridge lights in Edmonton signifying this week? On November 24th, red, white, and black for Intervivo's 15th anniversary. On November 25th, orange for 16 days of activism against gender-based gender violence. On November 26th, 
white and green for lung cancer awareness month. On November 27th, blue, yellow, and black in celebration of Barbados independence. On November 8th, blue and white for Hanukkah. You can check out this information at edmonton.ca slash light the bridge. Now, now over to Amy for our broadcast in French. Hi Amy. Merci beaucoup Maureen. Voici les titres de votre journal en français. Vous travaillez dur pour gagner votre vie et payer vos impôts locaux à la ville. Par curiosité, voulez-vous savoir comment la ville dépense cet argent? Le directeur financier de la ville de Calgary nous explique ici comment. Dans le cadre de notre projet sur l'inclusion, cette semaine, le patron du Edmonton Fire Rescue Services. Entendez les services de la ville d'Edmonton en charge de la sécurité incendie et les services d'urgence est venu partager avec la Versity TV ce que son département fait ou entend faire pour la diversité et l'inclusion. Nous avons le faire. Et maintenant, question de question. Merci beaucoup. Restez des nôtres. Over to you, Maureen, for the conclusion. Thank you very much, Amy. This is all we have for you this week. Thank you for watching Diversity TV Community Newscast. Be the first to get our community newscast as it happens. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification on our Diversity TV YouTube channel. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Our website is www.diversitymag.ca. See you next week because when it's Friday, it's your newscast from Diversity TV.